Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I thought we'd, um, we'd do a quick uh, little unboxing video and, um, and have a quick look at this. Um, I was hoping to do this video um, on Christmas Day, this was one of my um, Christmas presents. Um, but on December the 24th my, um, my internet connection went out. I only got it back um, on the 27th yesterday. Um, so basically, <laughs> all through the Christmas Christmas Day Boxing Day, I had no um, I had no internet, which was a bit of a pain. I, I mean, I had my smartphone. I, I mean, a data link on my smartphone. I connected that up, so I could at least stream a few things on YouTube and uh, bits and bats. And I've got unlimited data on my um, on my contract anyway, so um, I say it didn't cost me anything, but. You can't really do that much just having a mobile phone connection as your um, as your main internet connection, but these things. Anyway, I mean, I'm with Plusnet, and to be fair, I mean it's Christmas and everything. They got me back. They got us back on um, on the 27th. Uh, it wasn't any of my equipment either. It wasn't the fact that my router had gone out or um, anything like that. It was actually a fault in their system that something had happened. Um, but yeah, so unfortunately I couldn't make this video um, when I was planning to, so I thought, oh, sorry, I still want to show this thing. Um, so I'd make it now. Um, basically what I've got here is, um, it's a new desoldering station. Um, I've got a desoldering station, it's actually a PACE um, desoldering station. Which I've had for quite a number of years now. Um, the problem with it is... Is um, it was made in 1979, and uh, so was uh, so was I. So it's basically as old as I am, um, <coughs> and it does still work. Uh, but the problem with it is one thing: um, spare parts like consumables are starting to get quite hard to get for it, and they're starting to get prohibitively expensive. I mean. Um, like tips and things for that particular iron were never particularly cheap. It is it really is a very top end um, pasty soldering station. It's not just a soldering station; it's a whole rework station. It can take a ball mill on it and um, tweezers and all sorts of things, soldering iron, everything. But uh, like I said, parts are starting to get a little bit tricky to get for it. Um, a couple of years ago with it, and um, no one's made parts for it for years so all the parts that you can get for it are like new old stock or second hand and um, a couple of years ago the um, diaphragm in the uh, vacuum pump failed on it and it took me quite some time to eventually track down a um, new old stock diaphragm for uh, the vacuum pump on it I actually ended up having to get it from America in fact, the last time I needed some parts for it, um, as well as that, the time before that when I needed a new, uh, well actually, I just needed some some bits and bats, some cleaning bits and bats. I actually ended up buying an entire XM, X, um, USMOD accessory kit uh, with another hand piece and everything just to get basically the accessories that came with it, the cleaning things, a pile of tips and what have you. And... What's happened now, um, I mean it's actually it's buried up in my attic, but the last time I used it, I have a feeling that that uh, rubber diaphragm in the um, vacuum pumps started to fail again, because it seems to be doing what it did last time before it completely failed, as in you just don't get as much suction as you really should do when you uh, when you hit the pedal on it. And um, that's how it started last time, and then it just lost all um, suction at all when the diaphragm actually went. So I think because it's like probably nearly 40 year old rubber, even though it's a new part, it's a new old stock, I think that diaphragm's not lasted very long in it. Um, I mean that were, I think the diaphragm was £22, well no it was $22 sorry, I think, yeah, I think it was about $22 plus shipping from the US, you're not cheap. For it to only last, what, two years? You know, it's. Um, I, I, I'm not. I mean, I'm not using the machine industrially either. I'm um, literally just using it as a hobby user, really. So, uh, you know, I decided I would go for a modern desoldering station. Now, this, this was the cheapest proper desoldering station that I could buy 
shipped from the UK um, and it cost me $74.99 well it didn't cost me, it cost the person that bought it for me um, $74.99 including postage like I said it was shipped from a, um, a UK seller um, this is a, I'm not sure about the make but it is a ZD915 uh, now, I believe this is either the same or a very similar model to what um, Gadget UK um, bought for, I think, last year um, to replace his old uh, Welly desoldering station. So, I mean, I know he said, I think he said there's a few things about it which he, um, he said aren't brilliant, but I think he, he said he's reasonably happy with uh, what he's got. So, I so said this is the cheapest you can um, currently get in the UK. I think possibly if you have it shipped from China and wait for the time you can get them as perhaps a little bit cheaper. But I um, can't see it being that much cheaper than that. Right, let's see what we get. Oh, boxes are decent anyway. Right, UK manual. Thank you for shopping. Uh, we had this product details on the eBay description. Please follow the description. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Uh, right, just. I'm guessing with that in there that the manual might all be in Chinese. Right, let's uh, let's get in here anyway. <laughs> Ooh, right, so there's our there's our main unit. That's the power supply basically, and that's got the um, vacuum pump in it. We do. Oh, well, we do have a manual that's in English. Oh, possibly Chin English. We'll have to see. Let's get the box out of here. Now we have a mysterious white box. We've got. I think that's the stand. Some random bits in a packet, and oh, that's right. That's not bad. We have got a decent IEC. It's actually, and I don't know what the, um, co the conductors are like inside there, but that actually seems a fairly decent um, IEC lead. It seems to be a fair length on it as well. Let's uh, let's get that out of the packet. The first thing I want to check actually is what fuse is in there. Because a lot of this stuff they do have a tendency. Because not many countries use a fused plug and they do have a tendency to not have the correct actual fuse in the plug um, for things like this whether it's on an IEC or whether it is actually a wired 13 amp UK plug um, in fact uh, Gadget UK in a recent video he could, he's just got a Heiko hey um, desoldering station and not desoldering, soldering station sorry and um, when you looked at the plug on there should have like a 3 amp fuse in it or a you know, 5 at the maximum and it had a 13 in it. So, just again, this really, um, they don't pull a lot of power, perhaps an amp or two. So, um, really, a 3 amp, a 5 amp fuse is all you need. So, let's see what they've, um, let's see what they've stuck in there. It's just curious, actually, before we go any further. Let's just see whether they're, um, said if it's got a 3 or a 5 in it, then we're happy. If it's, um, if it's got anything bigger than that, like a 10 or a 13, that's a bit, it's too much, it's too high a rated fuse for um, this unit. Like say it doesn't pull a huge amount of um, juice, it's not like a big electric um, heater or anything. Right, so let's have a look in this. Look at that! Proper 3 amp fuse in there! So, um, yeah. I'm pleasantly surprised there. I was, I was honestly expecting to find, either, to find either a 10 amp, which is like a non-standard, but we tend to do it on these cables because the cable itself is only rated for like 10 amps. <coughs> um, or a 13 amp, but no, it has got the correct 3 amp fuse in there, so I'm, I'm pleased at that. That's a, um, that's a plus point for the seller, or the manufacturer, because this, this has come straight from manufacturer, it's just a UK importer I've got it from. 
I don't think the import has actually put the plugs on put the plug on this being that it's got unless the import has bought decent IECs and included them and then just chucked the cheap crappy Chinese one that come with this away I'm not sure but um, no that's um, that's better than I was expecting Right, let's have a get in. I presume this has got the hand piece in it, and I presume you have to put it together yourself. Oh, either that or it's tiny. Oh, it's tiny. It's smaller than I was expecting, actually. Well, it's not tiny, but uh, it is. It is smaller than I was. I suppose I'm used to the hand piece on my pace, which is like a monster of a thing. That's. That's certainly got a nice. You see, the difference is my the handpiece on uh, my pace basically looks like a, a massive soldering iron. You hold it like you would hold a soldering iron. It's not got a pistol grip on anything like that. It's like a big long thing, and you hold the back of it like that. And it doesn't have a trigger switch on it. You actually activate the suction using a foot pedal, as where this has a this has a uh, micro switched trigger on it. So I'm, I've never ever actually used this type of desoldering device. I've always used um, either manual desoldering, um, like suction pumps and stuff, or my pace, like I said, which has got like the straight, the straight handpiece. So right, yeah, that is very very lightweight. It's it hardly weighs anything compared with the um, handpiece on the, my pace. And the, I mean the whole weight of the unit as well, I mean, it weighs nothing. My pace you could not pick up at arm's length like that, you, <laughs> your arms wouldn't lift. Right, and it's a decently flexible um, like rubberized cable, it's not a nasty plastic thing. We've got, um, obviously we've got the mains flex and then the other thing we have is our, um, to goes to our suction. But, yeah, so far I'm actually reasonably, um, reasonably impressed. The other nice thing is these are uh, available as a spare part for like 20 quid or something like that. As where, well, I mean, the handpiece for my pace, I got, I mean, that whole kit that I got, it was new old stock and it was uh, ex-US US military stock. And it was it was expensive, and I can imagine how much it would have cost new, you know, back in the day. It would have been very expensive. This is twenty odd quid of a breaker. So I'm guessing, right? We've got a filter in. Yeah, it's got a filter in it. Um, power connect. Well, the handpiece connects up like that. Just make sure that is a full filter and it's not just a little screen or something. We need something we can just can get it with that. Oh no. Just looking at it, it is a it is proper one of them. So they've actually put one in already. I thought I wonder if it was just like a little gauze or something, but no, it definitely feels like it is a proper Ah, ah we have two ah right. So we've got a larger one there. There's a spare which replaces that. I'll have to order some of these because these I presume won't last very long. And then the smaller ones there that we've got three of, they're the ones for the gun in the back there, so they're not the same size. Right, now this here, I think. I should really look at the instructions, but you know. Man and all that. So we've got a ceiling washer, right I get you, so that goes in there, that screws on there, like that. So that's like your secondary filter, you've got your primary filter in your handpiece there, and that's your secondary filter just to make sure nothing actually does get back, because obviously you've got a pump here, in here, it's probably got a diaphragm in it like the one on my pace, and like I say, you've got a hot piece of solder hitting a uh, rubber diaphragm, um, nothing, it doesn't end very well. So, we've got that connected up to there, we've got any, is that a 
Has that even got a hole in it? Oh, we'll look at that after. We'll look at um, accessories after. Let's um, we'll plug that in there. I presume. Should be a tight fit. There we go. Always good to have a nice tight fit. That's not coming off there either. Mm. Sorry, a quick uh, slurp of coffee and it's Christmas. I've got myself a mince pie as well. Right, now, so we've got that connected up. Let's have a look at the stand. Okay. So, right, okay. So that I presume clips on like, like that. And then that. Right, yeah, fair enough, that works. Clean it off. Has that got a hole in it? Or has it just got some tin solder in the end of it? I'm not sure. So look at some of the other accessories that come with it. We've got some extra. Um, we've got a set of cleaning rods. Well, that's nice. That's what I was really missing for my pace and ended up getting all that stuff just to really get about a dozen tips and um, a set of them. Because I couldn't find any that were really quite right for the um, pace. They had to be quite long to be able to get all the way down the thing to um, clean it out, all the ones keep buying off eBay, didn't quite reach to the end. Nah, they're nice for that and they'll do that. Let's have a look at these um, these other tips. I will order I'll order some more um, some more filters for it. The other nice thing you know, all the bits like this are dirt cheap for these. So the filters, you can get a bag of like, I think about 10 of each for 350 or something like that. Uh, the tips, the tips for my pace are horrendously expensive when you can get them. These, I've, I've looked them up and you can get them for like 3 quid, something like that. So, you know, the, yeah, they are um, all just blocked up because they've got a little tin of solder on them from um, starting. So I'm not sure what tip we've actually got in the handpiece at the moment. I have dug out a few. Ugh. I've dug some scrap out so we can have a play and just see how well it um, desold as I've got a um, single sided board there. Um, it's got a few big ground planes that is very well salvaged that board uh, but there's a few ground you know biggish ground planes on there and um, there's a IC there we can perhaps have a go at um, popping off so well, there's no really big ground planes on the um, IC so that'll be an easy an easy test for it um, we've got an old I think it's like an old skybox or something like that decoder board um, I've been salvaging pins off there for some project or another but there's um, that pin header there has got some really big ground pe ground planes on some of the pins on this side um, and the, actually there's a couple on that side that have got fairly big uh, ground planes on them so that one would be an interesting one see if it can cope with that but a nice big switching transformer there as well which has got a bit beefier legs on it it's not got big, big ground players. There's a few uh, fairly big tracers going to it. So that would probably be a good one to um, try as well. Anyway, uh, first thing I need to do is power it up. So let's get our um, correct with a 3 amp fuse IEC lead. So it's quite a good... Um, I mean, it might be a pile of crap when we try it. <laughs> I've, never tr I've never tried one of these. But um, so far, I mean... Yeah, yeah, criticisms. It feels plasticky. 
it does feel plasticky. The, the trigger doesn't feel brilliant. It was 75 quid. <laughs> you know. <laughs> if you think what uh, some of the full on price um, desoldering stations cost. You know, if you go, you know, you look at Pace, JCB, or uh, some of the big, real big boys, um, you're talking stupid money, you're talking, you know, thousands, not hundreds. So for a sub £100, and you've got everything there to kick yourself off, then I don't think that's bad. Being that it actually does what it says on the tin, you know, that it's actually usable. Let's, uh, well, yeah, I'll peel off the, uh, peel the protective coating off the LCD, if I can get my finger on it. There we go. Ah. Better than pulling off a new mobile phone. So let's switch on. Okay. So it's got our temperature and it's got our set temp. So I'll work in Celsius. Right, we're heating. Uh, we'll start with this single-sided um, board here. I'll take it up to say about the 350 mark. Let's try 300 actually. Oh dear. If you hold it in, does it go quicker? Ah, there we go. Oops. Too much. We've got the usual um, bit of smoke coming off the... Uh, ...off the handpiece as it warms up. Seems to be uh, seems to be functioning. We've, uh, we've come with one of them little sponges to clean your thing off, but I've got my um, the what's it here, which I prefer. Let's put a little bit of uh, solder on that, and we'll have a go at perhaps desoldering one of them ICs. I think that tip should be about right for IC um, the solder. And let's have a let me get you down on the board. I'll zoom you in a touch. There we go. Have a look at that camera. Hopefully, I can keep you in shot. Now, where's that IC? I have to have a go up there. It is. Let's have a go. That's clear. Longer, give that a little longer. I'm sure anyone that's used these knows the technique, but basically go on the pin, just move it round a little bit and then start sucking. Keep moving as you suck though, and then you can get all the solder from all around the pin. So let it heat up, start moving it, then give it a bit of a suck. And like I said, as you, oops, I have to be careful about that, not hitting the uh, trigger too early on it. I've got one here, this has got a bit more of a, a trace to it. Let's heat that up. That's not done bad. Let's try the other side. So on, um, heat it up a bit, lay it in the ground, give it a stop. Again, on, move it round, give it a stop. Next, on, move it round, give it a stop. Obviously I'm not moving it round until I feel the solder melt. So like that, move it round. Bit of a sock. On. Move it round. Bit of a 
the sock. On. Oops. Move it round. Bit of a sock. On. Move it round. Have a sock. Last one. On. Move it round. And there we go. Right. Shall we see how successful that was at um get you there. oops tighten that up again or else we'll be losing you. So you saw me just suck off there. Have we been successful? Nearly. All the pins are loose, I think there's just one with a little bit of um Yeah, I think there's one there with a little bit of solder still on the end of it. Let's give that a quick try. Just that one there at the end. Oops. Is it? Oh, it's that one there. What you can do is just hold the thing against it. There we are. Out. At the end, quick cleaning my, uh, my sponge. I'll just tin that up. Okay, put that away. So yeah, uh, single sided board like that, absolutely no problem at all. I just suck that um, chip straight out of there. Let's get you, uh, oops, let me zoom back out a little bit. I'm trying to get you up a bit of that. Right, let's have a go. Yeah, we've definitely got some big, um, some fairly big ground connections on there. Especially like that end pin. That end pin there is um, got a massive, all this here, all this copper here, and then all down onto that copper there is all connected. So that's basically, I think that's probably your ground pin there. So I'm going to crank up the, um, I'm going to crank this up. I might go up to 400 just to. Uh, there we go, we're up at 400. I'm a quick slurp of my coffee. And we'll wait until um, the gauge there reads 400. There we go, we're up at 400. I don't where I'll take this whole connector off or anything, but I just want to see whether um, it can attack these, which are, um, looks there's a big, great big ground plane on here. So I'll put it on. And this is lead free solder as well, the other one would have been leaded. You know what? I need a small, I need a larger. Um, larger bit it's a little bit on the small side this bit but that's pulling them clean I don't I really don't have enough um, space on the tip to do a lot of whittling but just looking at them three I've just sucked three there Right, that is that end one there on the ground plane. It is, and we could just chop them off to see if they come off. I'm just going to take out. So that's on a big ground plane. That one. That one. Because that really I could do with a um, a bigger tip in it. Let's try that one. It does go over, but leaves very little whittle room. Struggling a little 
little bit with these these two. They're the two that are connected to the ground plane. But they could really do with them um, swapping that out. I'm not going to for this quick little uh, test. But I wonder if I was to cut that there now, whether they'd pop out. I've got a pair of snips or something. I need to get a pair of snips. Break it free from the um, rest of that, like that. So it doesn't matter. This is scrap, but you know, this boy's just scrap. Now, how are them solder points looking? Will that just pop up? Yeah. There we are. We got that off. I'm going to have a look. All them ones, even like I said, even though it wasn't, um, I should have really put a bigger um, tip on. It's pulled all them out, pro absolutely no problem at all. It's just these on that big ground plane that actually is probably a plus five volt plane up there. Um, basically, all them three, them three pins there, which have still got the um, pins stuck in them and three holes all go to the same uh, plane there so it is quite a large one I'm actually pretty sure if I put the right put the right tip on the end I would have uh, been able to suck them um, clean let's just try something else that's on the ground plane that's perhaps got a, I'll try one of these capacitors here because the I'll try that one there that capacitor because uh, the negative on that capacitor goes to a massive massive ground plane We'll see if we can get that out of here um, easily. I'll leave it. I'll leave it set to 400, and we'll see if we can get that cleanly out of the board. To, the legs are bent over, so it's going to be a bit of a first quick little suck just to get the. Um, this is the one with the massive ground plane on it. I have to hold it there for a little bit longer. Struggling with that side. This side, no problem at all. That's up. That's out. But this side, this is the one with um, like a really large ground plane on it. What we can try and do is just add a little bit of leaded. So obviously this is lead free that's on this board. We add a little bit of leaded solder. Leaded solder basically has got a lower temperature uh, melting point than uh, lead free. And then if we try sucking it off. And that got rid of most of it. Give that a quick clean. Now hopefully we can go in again and just suck the last little bit of let's have a look at that now. Is that gonna come out? Look at that. Straight away. The legs are slow because basically what they've done is they bent the legs over before they uh, put it in there, but that's straight out. And you can see the ground plane around there that that was on. You, know, you can spot that there. That was a huge ground plane that that um, both sides. You had a big negative ground plane on that side, and you had a uh, plus the voltage uh, line basically on that side there going through the plus side so they were both well anchored like I say it was sucking all the heat out and that came there they've got nice thin legs and that sucked that straight out of there so I'm actually really really happy with the um, I'm really really happy with this Right, I'm going to have to let this video finish now really quickly because, ah, hang on, there it is, don't worry, just one second. 
that's better because I had just realised that my camera <laughs> was running on battery rather than on mains and I just quickly glanced up at the screen and I could see uh, the final bar flashing on my camera <laughs> anyway I just caught it in time and plugged the charger in um, but yeah, I'm, I'll, we'll shut that off now it's a shame that it doesn't really have a cool down or anything by the look of it I think you just literally do just shut it off It'd be nice if it had like a shut down so it actually cooled the um, cooled that down rather than just off but um, you can't have everything I really am quite pleasantly surprised at that it's um Ainsty, I think the uh, make A N E S T Y Ainsty, I think it is. I'm sure these are made under um, various different brands. I'm sure they all have ZD915 on them. And I'm pretty sure they're all a rip off of something like a Heiko or um, one of the better brand um, desoldering stations. I'm pretty sure they're a, a rip off of one of theirs. It's, it's very much like that with a lot of these type things, some of the power supplies, I know my um, my hot air rework station uh, which is a we're only 20 quid or 25 quid or something, a really cheap one but um, I believe it's a rip off of a a better quality one and quite frankly it does everything I want from that from that side and this looks like this will be the same I mean I'll slightly misuse in my pace from the sheer you know fact that it was proper industrial you know it was designed to be used switched on in the morning and not switched off till the last person leaves at night kind of piece of equipment I suppose that's why the uh, military use them as well it is built like an absolute tank and don't worry it's not getting thrown away or anything I will uh, I'll probably end up putting it on eBay um, because there are people that do have their machines that still use them you know in anger and it would be a valuable opportunity to someone get some um, spare parts because I mean yeah I know the diaphragm like I, said, I think the vacuum pump started to fail on it again but it's got two hand pieces with it it's got a extra soldering iron with it um, a rework soldering iron with it it's got um, accessory kit and tips and all sorts of um, good bits that could be used on other machines or you could possibly I mean take the vacuum pump out of it and put a more modern I was actually considering doing that myself uh, it was just getting a more modern vacuum pump and installing uh, that in it but I quite fancied um, just having a more mod something that I know that I can still get you know parts for I'm going to probably order and as soon as I've got some spare cash I'll probably order a spare hand piece because they are so cheap um, I'm probably ordering another set of them. I'm definitely going to order some um, more filters. I mean, that's a given. You need uh, this is why how you don't destroy it having you know changing your filters regular. So I probably will put a new set of. Um, I will order some more filters so I've got spares. Oops. And I'll try not to throw all, throw all my uh, new tips all over the floor like that. But yeah, I'm, for the money, I am quite pleased with it. I'm very pleased with it actually. I and mean, the first thing it's going to do in anger, I suppose, is um, work on that BBC Micro that we're trying to get um, up and running. Hopefully, um, with this, I'm not going to um, struggle with any more um, IC removal like I did um, with them few the other week. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I um, hope you enjoyed this, what was already meant to be a 15-20 minute little unboxing video which has dragged on uh, far, far too long. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little look at my new um, desoldering station. So, thanks for watching and goodbye.